At some point in every person's life, you'll come across this equation right here. And for almost every one of us, we just go, all right, I'm going to take your word on that because I can't imagine ever really needing to understand that. But for a select few, it weighs on them. What do you mean S-E Well, take my hand, inhale, and I'm going to lead you through this. Before we jump into this, there are two fundamental truths you're just going to have to accept. Otherwise, you can just get. The first is that momentum is conserved. I don't know why, no one knows why, just in the universe, momentum is conserved. The second thing you must accept is that this right side only equals this E if all of this mass is converted into energy. The only way to do that is if all of the mass is converted into something that is massless. This could be kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, binding energy, all kinds of energy. But I want to simplify things since kinetic energy and gravitational energy are also mass dependent. Instead, let's say we want to convert all of this M into a massless entity. What's a really common massless entity? Yes, the photon or light. So I want you to think of this equation as, if I converted all of this mass into light, this is how much light energy I would have. Okay, momentum. Momentum is the ferocity of your motion through space. It's a really simple equation. Momentum equals mass times velocity. It's pretty easy to see that if something has zero velocity, it has zero momentum. The issue with that assumption is there's no such thing as zero velocity. The messed up thing is that you're always going to find someone who sees you as moving. Right now, the people or fish 180 degrees around the world from you are moving in the opposite direction. Moon men see you moving right along with the Earth, and there's endless possible ways to describe a motionless object's motion. This is when a rando German stepped up and asked, what does it even mean to say how much energy something has when only a tiny fraction of the world, let alone the universe, sees things the same way? How much energy something has is, might I say, relative to who observes it. Using derivations from Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism, this dude demonstrated that light will always be the speed of light regardless of motion. He concluded there must be a unique relationship between space and time, as only that would explain such a strange phenomenon. The former professor of this German, who was also of course German, wanted to explore this space-time relationship idea his pupil proposed, as it sounded pretty good. He soon established a mathematical basis proving we actually live in a four-dimensional reality. Now, instead of occupying three coordinates in space, you occupy four coordinates in what he called space-time, or Minkowski space. And instead of moving at varying velocities through space, you move at a constant speed or rate through space-time. Care to guess what that speed might be? Suddenly, nothing is relative. It doesn't matter what velocity or momentum through space I measure, it's moving through space-time at the same speed as everything else. If I return to ye old equation with the assumption that everything is moving at the same speed through space-time, I can factor out one of these c's and I suddenly get this. The mass times its speed through space-time c times c. Well, mass times velocity is just momentum. So this describes a directionless momentum. This is also known as the norm of four momentum, the momentum of an object through space-time or Minkowski space, something we don't need to go into today. The directionless nature of this momentum is important to highlight because when we traditionally say momentum is conserved, we are implicitly including the direction as well. If we have a system with two spheres of equal mass with one heading one meter per second to the right, then if they collide head on, that system must only have velocities moving to the right. If for some reason after collision both spheres moved away from each other vertically, the absolute momentum is still conserved, but we violated that implicitly implied notion that the direction must also be taken into account. So this directionless or invariant momentum means anything that inherits from it may move in any direction. Returning again to our equation, 
I start to see something familiar. Yeah, momentum times C is equal to the energy of a photon or light. Huh. E equals mc squared is another way of describing the light energy that would be released if we were to convert all of the energy stored as mass into massless pure energy or photons. Why is this knowledge useful? When we convert mass into energy, it doesn't always convert into light. In fission reactions, this mass is often released as kinetic energy. What an observer measures as kinetic energy can be a bit confusing if we consider the relativistic nature of observation. Let's visualize what I'm talking about. If an observer sees a fission reaction at 99.9% .9 C, then the particle's relativistic mass is great. This means it's hard to accelerate. After fission, the resulting daughter particles shoot away from each other at speeds of about 10,000 km per second. That is a lot of kinetic energy. However, due to relativistic velocities, our observer only sees them fly apart at about 20 km per second. If relativity did not exist, we would have violated the laws of thermodynamics as energy was not conserved between frames of reference. But when we conceptualize all energy moving through space-time with a constant speed, c, then we can negate this problem. Since mass and energy are the same thing, when mass or energy moves, they have momentum. Multiplying by the first c is kind of like describing the directionless momentum of that mass or energy through space-time. Because it is now directionless, our momentum isn't moving through space or time. It's just this value. That's why the norm of four momentum needs to be squared. Because when you multiply two vectors, you get a scalar value, or a value without any direction or motion. Now, I want to harness the energy of that momentum in my frame of reference. Therefore, I need this momentum to move through time with me. Well, I exist in what is called a proper frame. That means in my eyes, I am not moving through space. I am motionless. But I am not motionless in space-time. Therefore, if my velocity through space is zero, my velocity through time must be c. So I multiply our momentum times c so that it is moving along with me at the same rate in time. And that is why E equals mc squared. And that's also why it doesn't matter that we can perceive differing kinetic energies in our lower dimension viewpoint, because everything is moving as expected in space-time, and conservation of energy is safe. In summation, the amount of energy something with mass or a frame of reference has is relative to the frame of reference of the observer. If we describe that energy or mass as something that doesn't have a frame of reference, such as light or momentum through space-time, then E equals mc squared elegantly explains the absolute energy that would be.